always despise the free lunch. Why? Because it says so many things about you, fam. When you take the free lunch, let me tell you what it does when you take the free lunch. Here's what happens. You, you come across like a male trying to hustle and negotiate your way to get a lower price or something like that. And see, think about men who are walking around and thought of as cheap. In this sector, there are a lot of black men. How is that? How are black men faring with this? How this hustle get over kind of mindset? How do men fare when? How do how do men fare when they have that mindset? The reality is the world is the world is built by builders, and is consumed by women and children. The world is built by builders, and it is consumed by women and children. Now. Understand something. Here's where a lot we run into problems. I said it again on the other, on the other show. I asked this question the other day, ladies. In the black community, who leads? But I need you to ask yourself a question, gentlemen. Amongst men, who leads? Who leads you? And I will tell you this. Ask the rank and file red. I won't. I won't. I won't go down. Ask the rank and file guy in a lot of these spaces, and they will say they're their own boss. I'm my own boss. Don't nobody lead me. That's why we have a bunch of vertical stuff. Bunch of vertical stuff. Stacy, are you get? Are you getting? Hey, Stacy, on. Let me check. Let me ask you, sis. What's going on? You talk about folks is annoying in here. I'm gonna just tell you this, Stacy. Um, I'm 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 getting kind of I'm your antics are getting kind of uh, to the edge. You know, I like I like I let people rock out and and talk, but you're not gonna come over here and be a distraction. Either you come over here and act like the rest of the ladies. Oh, I'm going to have to just ban you off the channel. Because I'm seeing you like to tend to come over here and start shit. You go and try to antagonize stuff. And I don't want you in my chat room or my channel. I don't want anybody doing what you're doing. Disrupting stuff. Doing stuff that you know are going to. This is a men's channel. Men lead over here. You know what it is. So if you can't do that, just don't chat. But when I see somebody, they, nobody's harassing. Okay. Then I need they don't <clears throat> moderators. I don't have time for this. If she if she starts poking at people, antagonizing dudes, time her out. And if I see her time, and if I see you timed out, I'm gonna go looking. I'm gonna go look at what at what the moderators timed you out for. And if I see you poking at dudes, you're out of here. <clears throat> Where do you rank? Where do you rank? The world is built by builders consumed by women and children. See, when men who when men when mankind started to learn how to to work together, we stopped building horizontally. We stopped all being in charge of our own little stuff and we collaborated and built up. And we civilized the world. We dominated the planet. Look in the black community. More than thing, everybody got their own business, but it's all horizontal. There are no vertical businesses. So understand something. Builders, powerful men, movers and shakers, they have the 100% mindset. Men should pay for everything. Yes, everything. This needs to be your mindset if you want to be a powerful, successful man. This needs to be your mindset if you want to be a powerful, successful man. Bold, ambitious, and generous. You need those components if you want to be a powerful, successful man. And if you're and if you're the kind of person that always wants to go say yeah, but or look for the exception, 
kick rocks. We're dealing with the norm, the majority, the average. The 100% mindset is a way of going through the world. One, it hates the free lunch. I want you guys to imagine what it would be like to be a, a, a man, a black man, a man, a black man in particular, going through the world and you have a mindset of where you hate the free lunch. You despise the free lunch. Always despise the free lunch and the easy catch. It is the hard work, the hunt, the chase that makes the appetite keen. That is what you should be going for. Okay? That's what we should be going for as men. Men who want respect from other men should despise the free lunch. We don't like guys who take shorts. We don't like cheaters. Let's get right down to it. Men don't like cheaters. We like we set the rules out. We play by the rules. Even if the rules are in a gray area. But we don't like cheaters. Despise the free lunch. Go through life with a full, paying a full price mentality. Pay full price up front without question. Seek to pay all the time. Let me tell you how this works. How many times, have, what happened the first time, let me talk to black men. What happened the first time you went out with a group of white men, a group of non-black men, and you were at the bar and the check came and you saw non-black men, give me the check. No, no, you give me the check. Give me the check. No, you give me the check. And these guys actually got into it. No, you motherfucker. Do not do that. Don't insult me. I have seen guys get into almost fist fights over paying for the check. Because they have the 100% mentality. It's a matter of pride. Here you go, Tiffany. You're going to like this one. Juxtapose it with the cheap man. Juxtapose it with the cheap mentality. When the check comes, these dudes, is all, they're always in the bathroom somewhere. I want you to pay attention. If you're a cheap, selfish person, you find yourself always away from the check when it comes, hoping that somebody will pay your way. You ain't shit. In my personal opinion, you ain't shit. And I have structured my life to get away from people like you as, as, as quickly and as firmly as possible. That's what most Henrys do. Most Henrys, Blake, Blue, and his squad, they, they seek to get away from you. Check avoiding cheap motherfuckers. I'm telling you to your face. Most Blake and Blue, they won't even tell you. They'll just pay the check and see how you move, but you'll never get another invitation from these guys. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now, as your godfather, that's why you don't get invited out with a bunch of high-class men, a bunch of thorough dudes. That's why you hang out. That's why you don't hang out with a bunch of thorough dudes. Because you're selfish. You're cheap. I love the part where he talks about you get around these dudes and they're prideful and they want to pay for everything. You're not going to disrespect me. And if, you know, you don't want to be that kind of dude, you'll never get invited out ever again. They won't talk about it. Be like, hey, you know what? You're just not that kind of person. This is why I bring this up. I always say this, and some people don't believe me. They'll say, oh, I would never change if I made money. Yes, you would. I'd never change my friend group. Yes, you would. Let's say you go from making, let's just say $30,000 a year. Just, you know, what's that? $15 an hour, something like that? Let's say you go from making that to, uh, let's say in the next 10 years from there, you go from making $30,000 to $125,000 a year. That's not necessarily rich, but let's just, let's just use that for an example. So you're making $125,000 a year now. Do you think you're still going to hang out with somebody who makes $30,000 a year? You think you would still hang out with other dudes? Like I, said, like I said, it's been some time in between them and now. Would you think you still hang out with the same people? Same type of people, I would say. Okay, let's say you, you meet somebody, you're in your 40s now, you're making six figures, $125,000, maybe $200,000 a year. You're in your 40s now. Are you going to hang out with the 35-year-old or the 40-year-old who makes $30,000 a year? The person who makes 20 bucks an hour? No. Why? 
I want you to think about it this. It's not about you being some stuck up person. But at some point, it would make no sense to hang out with them. Especially if there's somebody who's stuck. But also, you it would be irresponsible to hang out with somebody like that. Because you know they can't afford your life. You would be the one paying the check every single time. You'd be the one doing all the stuff. They couldn't come and hang out with you at a certain golf course. They couldn't come to you, go on certain trips like you could. They couldn't just pick up and fly somewhere. They got to go to work in the morning. You may be living a completely different life. You're still working just as much as they are, if not more. But you do have a flexible schedule. Because your schedule may require you to fly here or drive there. You may need to be in New York in the morning. And when you're done with your business meeting, you can hang out in New York for a couple of days. They can't do that. They can't afford to go out to New York and just chill for a few days. They don't make that kind of money. Right? And I'm talking about $200,000 a year. You can live decently. You might not be able to do a whole lot with $200,000 a year. You're living a decent life. But somebody making $30,000 a year, y'all's worlds are, y'all are living completely different lives. Even if you're living below your means, let's say you make a $200,000 a year and you're living off half of that. The person who makes $30,000 a year can't still get close to you. They can't talk about the same things. Y'all are living completely different lives. I say this to say this. Even if you're a person who makes money, he talks about being cheap. Being generous, once again, I know we're going right back to that. But the reason you need to get around more people who make money, because here's what, Getting, getting low. Here's what happens, guys. When you hang around people who make money, you just tend to start making more money if you're smart about it. You start to see how they move, how they live their lives, how much they work. Hold up. And how much they don't always value the weekend. Hold up. <laughs> they ain't those kind of motherfuckers every time they get a chance to get off, they don't do shit the whole day. As soon as they get off on Friday night, they don't do shit from Friday night to Saturday to Sunday. They may maybe walk, go outside, work on the car a little bit, and that's it. They don't put any extra hours into getting away from the life they don't want, the job they don't want to work, right? Or you get around people who are making more money and they're living their dream life. Or I don't want to say dream life because it's kind of hard to do that because there's so many factors that go into that. But they're working a job they at least enjoy, Right? When you get around somebody who's making a lot of money in around a job they enjoy, you see how different this shit is. But the, here's the one thing that drives me nuts. He talked when Kevin's talking about all these men who, when the check comes, they're like, give me that shit, give me that shit, give me that shit. Because it's not about just the money. It is a pride thing. But these motherfuckers know money keeps coming because they're always going to work as long as they can. A lot of you guys are always looking for a way not to work anymore. You don't have a passion for shit. And you don't want to work any more than you have to work. And even when you're given the opportunity. Oh, this about to hurt. I know. I know. Come on now, dog. I know. Come on, man. I'm not trying to be all in your business. (laughs) Because I don't know y'all. You don't know me. But I can tell you something, man. In your 30s and 40s and 50s. 20s. Motherfucker, you're going to work every single day. If you got a real passion out there for something, you will get your rest when the day comes. I promise you, you will get your rest. You do need to take breaks. I'm not saying you don't need to because if you don't, your body will get sick and you will be out longer than you would like to be. But if you don't get out here and start pushing yourself every single day, if you like for me, guys, I'm being honest. And I, I'll take it towards me because I, I'm not this high value guy, but I do have a passion. And I'm willing to put as many hours in as I have to. I have a job. I have a full-time job. And I still do this. But when you wake up in the morning, what the fuck do you want to do? Like, you guys, a lot of of us, and I'm including myself in, a lot of us say we want to get out of the job we hate. I already made a video talking about this. But you want to get out of that job you hate. Or at least put more, at least be able to split up your time more. Maybe work part-time at your job and work part-time doing your passion. But motherfucker... You wake up every day and when you get a day off or you get some time off, you don't take any time, any chance to do that shit. You don't put any time to learn about it. You don't do anything to uh, build your craft in it. You're just a person who has a, a hobby and you're lazy about that shit too. 
You don't put no money into it. You always try to find shortcuts. You don't try to you don't try to pay somebody to teach you. You don't try to do any of that shit. You're just always trying to find the easiest way out. That is a completely That is completely different. You guys are looking for an easy way out when you say you don't want to work no more. The people who are really going to see that that top money or 100% kind of men, they're not still looking for an easy way out. They're like, I know I'm going to have to work even harder to do what I want to do in my life. But I'm okay. I'll put in all the hours I have to while I'm not getting paid to do it, and when I do get paid to do it, I'm going to try to take that $1 I'm getting, put it back in the business, and keep this bitch rolling until the money is flowing like a motherfucker. And then when the money's rolling like a motherfucker, I'm going to work even harder then because now I don't have to work my full-time job no more. I could put even more time into this bitch. They go from putting uh, 30 hours into it because that's all the time they got, or 15 hours if you got kids. They'd be like, well, I went from putting 10 hours into it and then once I could find time here, I was able to put 20 hours into it. And then once the money started coming in a little bit more, I could put 30 hours into it. I could work a little bit less than my full-time job. And then next thing you know, ha, fuck, I can do this full-time now. Now I put about 60, 70, 80 hours into this bitch when I get a chance. Because now that I have flexible hours, flexible hours, I can do this overnight or I can do this at some other time and still be able to try to get some time in my family. Can't get it all in, but I can get even more time because my schedule allows me to do so. So I work even more now. See, that's what people don't do when they say, "I want here's my dream job. This is what I would do to do it. They don't put any extra time into it. They still want that nine to five, 40 hours a week. Now, people who really are ambitious and entrepreneurs, they're going to put all types of times into it. So this whole thing about being 100% men and getting around men and saying, hey, I'll pay for the check is because like, you know, you you're a worker. You know, the money will always keep coming. But some of the people have that scarcity mindset. They don't pay for nobody. They don't want to give up any of their money because they're scared they're going to lose it one day. Because they know they're either cutting corners or maybe they cheaped out on the skills or they got lucky. Hard workers don't know they didn't get lucky. They're like, man, I put my work into this. Even, and this is going to sound crazy because I don't, I, I'm, and I'm saying this, this part is coming out of my ass. Everything else I said wasn't. This is. But I would like to believe that most men who finally get to that point where they're making so much money, they think in their own head, man, if I lost this job today, or I went bankrupt today. I'd make it back. I have made myself skillful enough. I am hardworking enough. And hardworking, it ain't just hard work. It's hard work, skills, networking. But if you put all that effort in, if you were to go bankrupt or something that happened to your money, because of the, the skills you built, the how generous you were with people, the people you network with, and all the skills you gained along the way, your money will come back to you. Because when you get around certain kind of men, they'll, even if they start to see you fall, because they know what kind of man you are, you, something starts to drip a little bit, they'll be right there. They'll be like, hey, man. And they're not just going to give you money. Think about, hey, man, look, I got this shit over here. I think you're the right person for it. Come fuck with me. I want to tell you a story about Terry Crews, and then we'll keep you going. Y'all remember Terry Crews before he became, he before he got on Everybody Hates Chris? Before he got the, before he ever got that opportunity on next Friday, the reason he even got that is because he was a security guard, and he kept himself in great shape, and he got noticed by Denzel Washington, not Denzel Washington, he got noticed by the director of Training Day. He said, "Hey, can you be in this scene?" And he was in the scene for maybe what thirty seconds during the whole King Kong ain't got shit on me. Somebody saw him in that and said, "Hey." You know what? I saw you in that other shit. You want to come fuck with me on next Friday? Ice Cube had found him. And from there, things happen along. Y'all go watch the interview. Somebody comes up to him and says, hey, you want to be in Everybody Hates Chris? They didn't call it that at the time. But they're like, hey, I got something for you. See, when you do the right thing for the right people, out of just the, the kindness of your heart, because that's who you are. It ain't You're not trying to bullshit somebody. You're trying to be like, hey, man, I really fuck with you, man. I'm just trying to support you however I can. This is all I got. I got $5, man. I I, I go to your Patreon. I don't have a lot going on, but I, I fuck with you. You never know. When somebody's like, hey, I noticed you, big dog. I noticed how long you've been fucking with me. I got something for you. I think this is, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for you. Bam! Your whole life changed. Even if it's not that very moment. It's just a small shit that can turn everything around. 
one sponsorship, one partnership. Yeah, you know, and for you guys who don't know, but when you fuck with a sponsor, somebody who's a sponsor, and you and you're the right person for them, and you're the right partner for them, man, they could change your whole damn life. Cause they're like, man, this person's always supported us right. Every time we gave him a sponsorship, he was dedicated. He didn't just give us one video. He shouted us out blankety blank times, even when we weren't even sponsoring the motherfucker. He kept it moving. That's what I'm talking about. It's networking. But all this stingy shit, all this, well, I'm not going to support that that local business over there because they sell flowers like I sell flowers. No. Work together. Go over there. Hey, man. Eh? I know the show. You, you like these kind of flowers. I don't really know how to fuck with those kind of flowers. But hey, look. I know that you don't know how to do these kind of flowers, but I got those kind of flowers. Let's fuck with each other. No, nobody wants to do that shit. They want to, oh, I got to I gotta beat their ass. I'm not saying there's, not, there's nothing wrong with competition. Not saying that at all. But I'm saying these, these big ass companies that y'all think are just, that's the only company that's being ran. The people that run those companies are running other companies because they work with other motherfuckers. If y'all always think that blank company, let's just, I'm not saying this is true, but Coca-Cola and Pepsi, Y'all think those motherfuckers ain't working together? You're crazy. You think it's just... Anyway. Nobody likes hanging out with selfish or cheap dudes, man. want to go nowhere with dudes like that. But Godfather, I'm, on, I'm a young guy. I don't have that much money. Great. It's not your turn yet. You get in the game at 27 years old. What? Yeah. From 18 to 27, you got to put 10 years into the game of eating shit. You got to eat shit for about 10 years, 17 to 27. Because you don't have the you don't have the money, the experience, the resume or the clout to compete with higher value, higher ranking males. But here's the upside at 28 years old or at 27 years old, when you can get in the game. Other 23-year-olds got four years left. I don't know where you young guys thought that you just, just because you graduated and have a smartphone, that, that you graduated and have a smartphone and an opinion that men who actually had to go out and earn the knowledge and intelligence put on the internet to give you to make us equals. How many times have you heard guys who know shit trying to call me and debate with me? 20 years old, living in your mama's house. You're going to question me? Shut the fuck up. Despise the free lunch. Pay full price up front without question. What does that mean? Well, uh, stop asking me for free shit. Go online and book a consult. Don't know which service to book. You got so many. Uh, seeks to pay all the time without exception and seek to pay the highest price. Here's what you do. You don't know what service to book. Go buy the highest price service. You know what? You know who does that? I did that. Winners do that. See, before anybody, before there was a YouTube, I moved this way. And I noticed that I separated myself from a lot of guys. Because I weren't, I was not always trying to hustle or talk my way into it. Even though I do have the gift of gap, I, I sought to pay. There's an account I want to get into. Let me see what I can buy from them. Let me see how I can patronize their business instead of just going in and asking them to buy something from me. Let's take a break. That's a lot right there. Let's take a break. Let's take a break because that right there is a twist for a lot of guys, especially in the black community because you were raised by mama. Raised by women, that's feminine energy. Feminine energy does not is not giving like that. Oh, I'm going to get to the women. I'm going to get to the women. Despising the free lunch, wanting to pay, pay up front, pay full price, it's a matter of pride. Shout out to O'Shea. You hear O'Shea talk about how many men in the manosphere he supports. When I work with somebody, I buy their service. Boop, boop. I'm a, it's always give, 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 then ask. See, that's a hundred percent mindset. Allowing yourself to be, and, and this is why you want to do it at all times. Because not because if you allow yourself to become a hundred percent, 
It reduces your edge. You're off your game. 100% men surround himself by men like him. Train younger guys to be like him. And his reputation precedes him when dealing with other men and dealing with other people. Men realize that's 100% man. 100% men gravitate towards each other. 50-50 dudes get away from them. And women who are interested in 100% men gravitate towards them too because they know what his benefits package looks like. He sets the price high and lets the market figure out how to afford them. Let's talk about it. Set the price high, gentlemen, and let the marketplace figure out how to afford them. How often do you see that go on sale? Hmm? How often do you see that company have a sale? You ever see those two brands at Target? You ever see those two brands at Neiman Marcus Last Call, which doesn't exist anymore? Saks Off Fifth? Nordstrom Rack? Nordstrom doesn't even carry that stuff. When Neiman Marcus has sales and Saks has sales, certain brands never go on sale. Chanel never goes on sale. Ever. Bentley, never. Cartier, Hermes, Bentley. How come these luxury brands can, can survive even in tough economic times? Because people find out, they find a way to pay for what they want. Let me tell you something. Set the price high and let the market figure out how they can afford it. Guys, think back when you were a young man and you wanted that, that bicycle or that video game or whatever it was you want. Let's say you had an allowance. You didn't have enough money. What did you have to do? You had to save. You had to save. You had to wait. You couldn't immediately get it. You couldn't get everything you wanted. Those mama, daddy, they said no. And if you had solid parents, they made you wait. Or they made you work for additional money to be able to get what it is you wanted. We know this. Why do you see some of the most uncouth trailer park, country, ghetto hood people go into Louis Vuitton, Tom Ford, Neiman Marcus, and they pull a, they start acting like they got some sense. They go in there and the price is retail, $1,200, and they pull out cash. Or their credit card or whatever. They pay full price plus tax. They ain't trying to shoplift that stuff. I'm in Atlanta and I go, I see this every weekend. You got younger people coming out of their pocket. Stacks. But then you go to some place like Zara. Walmart. You go in there and close, go go to a go to go to a discount store. Clothes all over the place, hung crooked, different ambiance. Even if you ran into one, even if you ran into a Louis Vuitton over there, you'd be like, "Ah, oh, this is fake." I want to make this clear. I want to make this very clear. You don't have to afford all this shit now. I'm not like we're watching somebody who's already who was successful. Rest in peace. Well, we don't have to talk. I'm not saying at every moment in your life that if you're 30 years old, you should want to go buy Louis Vuitton. There's no need for you to do that. <laughs> I mean, if you got it, you got it. But you don't need it. You don't need to be doing all this luxury shit until you're much older. But the point is, the habits you build getting there, to those points, if you ever want to wear a luxury shit like that, right? Because... I think it's so important about the, I already went into this. I'm not going to go way deep into this again, but the best way to really get yourself into these places, to these networks I talked about earlier is like he said, patronize, be a patron of these people, 
Get in there and help their establishment before you ever say a word to them. One thing that's important to me. Now, I'm not saying, and this is for my content creators, I'm not saying don't work with sponsors and stuff like that. Don't reach out, fill out applications. But a good way to get in with a lot of people, the only time I've ever gotten sponsorships or gotten free shit or whatever, is because I would tell people about the product I already had and say, hey, it works great for me. And then they would reach out to me a lot of the times. Like anytime I got free stuff and I used to show off stuff is because I already supported them. I already bought a lot of their expensive shit. I would normally buy one of the higher priced stuff on there if I could afford it. Buy that. Can't do that everywhere, obviously. I can't go support Bentleys because I can't afford a Bentley. <laughs> but I'm saying like if I can afford it, I will buy that thing and buy one of the better things of it and display it every time y'all see me on camera. And talk about, hey, man, how much I love this, how much I love that, whatever it happens to be. Because in those people, it's so much easier to be a partner with them or work with those kind of companies because they're like, hey, he already fucks with our shit. Perfect. But when you're fucking with other companies, one of the best ways to get in with them is to say, hey, I already support you. You know, even if some, if some reason they never do reach out to you, and you, you think about it one day, you're like, hey, I would like to fuck with him. Let's see if I can. That's fine. I don't, I don't there's nothing wrong with reaching out. But it's crazy when you see people who are like, um, they reach out to companies and say, can you sponsor me? And it's like, for me, if I was the business and you say, can you sponsor me? And I'd be like, I look, I go, okay, sure. Before I even respond to you, I'm going to go look at your videos and be like, this motherfucker don't even... <laughs> They don't have none of our products. They don't talk about us. They don't speak about us. They don't even work in the same area they're talking about. They say they want a free mic, and I don't see no mics and no videos. They just want something free for me just so they can put it, uh, put something in their affiliation, put it in their affiliate link, and say thank you for sponsoring me. It'd be like, I didn't sponsor shit. You asked me for some free shit so you could make money off of me, off of my products, and you ain't even supporting the brand. So you want me to send you something for free? As if I'm getting the win. As if I don't already make money. You're asking me for a free product because you know my products are good, but you don't even buy them? No, ma'am. No, 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 no. You got me laughing in this motherfucker. <laughs> you know what? Give that guy a map. Give him a map. Where are you going? Not to my establishment at all. Give that guy a manual. That's what I'm saying. It's crazy. So yeah, start to patronize the people. Like, get out there and do shit. <laughs> Make a real difference. Stop looking for the free shit. Oh man, I wish you... Why can't somebody support me? Why don't I get sponsorships and brand deals? When you probably don't put in the effort. Sometimes brands aren't just, just aren't flat out ever going to see you. And I'm going to say something that really... That really just... Pisses me off. I'm going to tell the truth. It just pisses me flat off. I've talked to some content creators who will get sponsorships and I'll talk to them about it and be like, hey, what do you actually think about this product? And they'll just flat out tell me and say, I don't know. <laughs> I just took the money. I don't care about any of this shit. They asked me for a sponsorship and I said, yeah. Or a brand deal and they just said, yeah. I'm just like, that's so deceitful. See, listen, up, guys. This is another thing about being generous. If you're a content creator, care about your supporters. You'll never see me promote anything on here that I don't truly believe in. You're never going to get on here and me and say, Hey guys, <laughs> today's video is sponsored by some random ass company that I don't talk about or know anything about. You've never heard about them till today. I've never spoke about them. I've never talked highly about them, but I'm going to talk about them today because they're paying me. I'm not that deceitful. Money don't drive me like that. It don't. It just don't. And it's not because I'm this special ass person or anything like that, or I'm smarter than anybody. I just know how deceitful I've been in the past and how many people I fucked over trying to be this kind of guy. And I know it's fucked up. I don't want that karma back on me. I won't do that to people. I know how many lives that can really screw up. And I know selling a product on there might not screw somebody's life up. But once again, what did option just say? A 
bad foundation can lead to danger. A bad foundation can lead to danger. If you fuck people over now, you'll fuck people over later. And it's just going to take one mistake for everything to come crumbling now. So for you content creators who are doing that same cheap kind of shit, fucking people over and saying, hey, b- buy this, this thing that I don't care about. And then it, that the whole shit viruses up your entire computer and they steal all your, your information. I can't stand content creators like that. I get everybody needs to make bread. And I don't, I don't come out and say their names. I don't come out and talk shit about them. Do whatever you want to do. Do you, boo. Do you. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to fuck with you. Just like Kevin said, I won't say nothing. I won't talk about it. But I see how you move. And you'll never, we'll never communicate again. Because you're fucking over the people who are trying to support you. And you're just selling them shit. Shit. The same thing that goes for some of these content creators who sell all these overconsumption where they shit you know you can't afford. I get it. You're a grown-ass adult. You can make your own decisions. But some of these people, they get to these people who are on their last dime or just not thinking. They're like, hey, you should buy this shirt that I'm never going to wear ever again. Hey, you should buy these shorts that I'm just going to return as soon as I get off this fucking camera. That's deceitful. I don't care how you slice it. As much as people want to say, well, that's not on the content creator. That's the kind of people you want to stay the fuck away from. Whenever I see people say shit like that, like, well, they're a grown ass adult. They should make decisions for themselves. You're absolutely right. I won't be fucking with you, though. (laughs) You sound like a motherfucker that would fuck me over. I'm not messing with you ever again. I'm not talking to you. I'm not messing with you. You're the kind of person that's going to mess up everything I got going because you're going to screw somebody over to make a quick buck. I don't want that. I want somebody who's willing to pay full price. I want somebody who's really willing to look into some stuff. There are some great content creators who won't tell you about a product at all until they've looked fully into it. They've used it for a few months, maybe even a year, and then they come back and say, hey, I got this shit for you. I've been using it for a while. I really look into this shit. I fuck with them. You fuck with them. I'm going to get a little bit of bread. And you're going to get a great product. Let's help each other. Nothing wrong with that. You're going to get what you need. I'm going to get what I need. But I'm only telling you about this shit because I really fuck with them. So think about that stuff, guys. Whenever you're networking and you're growing... Think when you get around those people, when you meet somebody who doesn't want to ever play full price, they always try to look for a slick way around. They're always the people who say these magical words where they're grown adults. They can make their own decisions. People like that, pew, out of there. Don't talk to them. Don't fuck with them. Let them live their lives. You ain't got to insult them. You ain't got to call them names. Just say, hey, blessings to you, brother. I wish you the best. And be gone. The other people going to screw up your whole life. Your whole life. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Get around those 100% men. The kind of guys you see, like he said, out there saying, hey, I really like those people. Let's go eat at their establishment. And let's kind of put that in our rotation. Let's come about once or twice a month. And let's uh, let's start eating at this restaurant a lot. You know, I mess with them. And then after a year or so, be like, hey, I've been coming here for about a year. I noticed this about your food. Hey, you know what? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a marketing person, and I feel like I could really help your business. I feel like I could really market this restaurant because I know the food. I've eaten the food. I've looked around. I hear the music. I see the setting. I see the tables. I see the chairs. I see the kind of people you let me hear. I've seen the menu prices, and I come in here all the time. I see the kind of people you got working here, and I've been coming here for the last year. I think we could actually work together. I like what you got going on. That's the cup. Y'all ain't fucking with me right now. <laughs>